Kennywood is famous for their collection of classic wooden roller coasters, and of the three that currently operate, Jack Rabbit is the oldest. This wood coaster was designed by John Miller. The ride opened in 1920, and it was a revolutionary ride for the time, featuring an all-new wheel system. 100 years later, this coaster is still immensely popular thanks to the thrilling double dip. So in this video, I will review Jack Rabbit at Kennywood and explain why this coaster is timeless. Wood coasters have always been Kennywood's DNA. The park built their first roller coaster in 1902, the figure eight toboggan side friction coaster. Over the next 10 years, Kennywood would add three more wooden roller coasters in the scenic railway, the speedo plane, and the original racer, which is different than the one that currently operates at Kennywood today. The later two rides were designed by John Miller. Until 1919, roller coasters only had two sets of wheels, road wheels on top of the track and guide wheels on the side of the track so the coaster could turn. This severely limited coaster designers. They had to be careful the ride wouldn't jump the track, so they were hamstrung in terms of height, speed, and steepness. This is why many of the early wood coasters were scenic railways with brakemen to regulate the speed. But everything changed in 1919. John Miller patented the upstop wheel. The upstop wheel would run underneath the track to prevent the train from lifting off the track. This allowed coasters to be built taller, faster, and steeper. This same wheel assembly is used over 100 years later, showing just how important its creation was for the roller coaster industry. And one of the first roller coasters to feature this new wheel system was the Jack Rabbit at Kennywood. Built in 1920, Jack Rabbit would feature elements that had never been seen before. The coaster would be located in a ravine and it would feature one of the world's largest drops at 70 feet or 21 meters. But that wasn't even the most notable element. The most ambitious element and biggest test for those upstop wheels would be the double dip. Just imagine if there weren't upstop wheels. There's a 0% chance those trains would remain on the track during that insane element. Jack Rabbit was a game changer for both Kennywood and the industry. The park's prior woodies were suddenly obsolete and they would be removed by the end of the 1926 season. Meanwhile, Jack Rabbit just celebrated its 100th anniversary last year and it shows no signs of leaving. And John Miller was brought back in 1924 and 1927 to design two other wooden coasters that still operate at Kennywood to this day. First was the Pippin in 1924, which was expanded and renamed the Thunderbolt in 1968. Second was the new racer in 1927, a Mobius wooden roller coaster. Those rides were taller and longer than Jack Rabbit, but they still did not offer an element that could top Jack Rabbit's double dip. Jack Rabbit often sports a reasonable line. In my visits, it has always been between 15 and 30 minutes. The queue line runs alongside the start of the ride. Jack Rabbit starts with a straightaway that's no more than two or three feet from the queue line. The only thing separating riders from those in line is a thin metal fence. It's rare a queue line brings you this close to a coaster, and seeing the smiles of riders on board really gets you hyped up for your ride. The rest of the layout is positioned in the ravine. Only the lift hill can be seen from the midway, but you can get some great views of the rest of the ride from the picnic pavilions. Once you reach the station, you are greeted by the ride's classic trains. Kennywood is three of them each consisting of three cars with three rows in each. The current rolling stock were manufactured by Mattel and trains feature heavily cushioned seats, a fixed lap bar that will rest a good foot above the laps of most riders, and a shared seat belt. And kudos to Kennywood for maintaining these classic trains. It is rare to have such minimalistic restraints on a roller coaster, let alone one with the airtime like Jackrabbit. And these simple restraints keep the height limit relatively low at just 42 inches. In terms of seat selection, you definitely want the back. No questions asked. This ride is all about the double dip, so you want as much whip as possible on that element. Kennywood typically admits a train's worth of people into the station at once because it's a rather narrow station. But the operators are more than willing to let you wait an extra cycle if you want your first pick of the seats. Once dispatched, you slowly rumble down the track adjacent to the queue line. After you round the corner, 
you suddenly see the track disappear down the ravine, and shortly thereafter, the train dips down that first drop. This drop gives a tiny pop of airtime in the back, but it's just the warm up for what will follow. The pullout from this drop is a bit bumpy. In fact, all of the coaster's valleys bounce you about, but it rides much smoother than you'd expect for a ride that's 100 plus years old. And because of the ride's modest top speed and well pad trains, these bumps cause no discomfort at all. You then rise out of the ravine, getting no air time in the ascent. You then crawl through a 180 degree tunnel, but fun fact, this is not the ride's original tunnel. The first tunnel was present from the ride's opening day until 1947. The original tunnel was removed when the new trains were ordered. Thankfully, Kennywood re-added a slightly shorter version of the nostalgic tunnel in 1991. You then drop back down the ravine, getting no airtime, and then you rise up into the lift hill, again getting no airtime. You then ascend the 40 foot tall or 12 meter tall lift hill. At this point, you start mentally preparing yourself for the double dip. You can see it in all its glory if you look off to your left. At the top of the lift, you round a 180 degree corner and then the mayhem starts. The first part of the double down is a modest drop, roughly 40 feet in height. This drop gives a faint pop of air time in the back car, but the second part of the drop is what makes Jackrabbit special. After leveling off for a moment, you drop right back down the ravine. And this drop tries to launch you into Canada, and I'm pretty sure it would if that seatbelt weren't there. You owe your entire life to that seatbelt. The ejector airtime as you plunge down the ravine is absolutely insane. The train just drops out from underneath you, and you are abruptly thrown upwards no matter which seat you're riding in. But the drop is extra magical in the back car. The force and suddenness of this airtime often causes my stomach to drop, akin to a drop tower. It is a rare coaster that can do that to me. But the double dip is no joke. This is seriously one of the best airtime moments of all time. This must have been one of the first ejector airtime moments ever created, and I can't imagine how surprised people must have been experiencing this element for the first time. You then rise up into another turnaround, yet again getting no airtime. You round a corner and head down the ride's largest drop, the aforementioned 70 foot tall plunge. It is exceedingly rare that a ride saves its largest drop for last, and that's exactly what Jackrabbit does. Yet unfortunately, that drop fails to offer any airtime. You then rise up into the brake run, again getting no airtime, ending the ride. So what would I rate Jackrabbit? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. The double dip alone earned Jackrabbit each and every one of those points. That element blows me away each time I ride this coaster. And I love how Kennywood has kept the experience as close to how it was on the ride's opening day. Jackrabbit is the definition of a one trick pony, but that one trick just happens to be world class. Few coasters are more defined by any one element. The most common type of one trick pony are launch coasters like Top Thrill Dragster or Dododampa. It is exceedingly rare to have one element define a wood coaster like it does for Jackrabbit. If you remove Jackrabbit's double dip, this ride would be nothing. It would place 60 to 70 spots lower on my wood coaster rankings. Needless to say, this coaster's pacing is pretty poor. You spend almost the whole ride waiting for or reflecting on that double dip. Jackrabbit is a very unique coaster. It is a flawed ride that really only offers one thing. But it does that one thing so well, that's a good ride. So those are my thoughts on Jackrabbit, the classic wood coaster at Kennywood. Have you been on the Jackrabbit? How do you think the double dip compares to other airtime moments out there? I would love to hear what you think about this coaster down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.